In this series, we've talked about the core networking, you know, essentially like what Kubernetes networking net uh, looks like. So, you know, how pods work with networking, core DNS, having the ability to communicate between pods, and how does that all work? Well, in the cloud, right? So like, let's say you're using Azure Kubernetes service or Elastic Kubernetes service in AWS or Google Kubernetes engine, whatever. That networking is kind of handled for you in the cloud. It's very much abstracted away from you. But there may be times that you see yourself managing a bare Kubernetes cluster, a raw Kubernetes cluster, maybe using something like KubeADM or you know something along those lines on a bunch of virtual machines. So the way that that works is the networks are actually frameworks. So if we take a look here, there is a bunch of different networking that's available. So like Cisco has their own, AWS has their own, Azure has their own, etc. There are a bunch of different ways to do networking and really it's all doing the same thing, right? Like it's routing traffic, inbound, outbound, between pods, between services. That's kind of how it all works. Like the core of Kubernetes internally is networking, just pretty much like everything else. So all these services, whether it's in the cloud or whether it's on-prem or whatever, have their own. But when you roll your own Kubernetes cluster, and what I highly recommend is, you know, if you're just breaking into Kubernetes, give it a shot. Use something like KubeADM to deploy Kubernetes. And then once you do that, you'll be able to do something like this, which is installing an add-on. So if we take a look at all of the networking and network policies that are available, as we can see, there are a bunch. And some vary, like some are way harder to set up because there's more complexities based on your environment. Some are like literally you just run a Kubernetes manifest and your network is up and it's pretty much just like that. There are some that are specific for security. So they're all doing the same thing, but some are just harder to use than others. Well, I shouldn't say harder to use. It's some are more complex based on your needs. So like if you need something that's, you know, a little bit more in depth with what you can do with it and it has a bunch of bells and whistles there's add-ons for that if you need something that's like listen i just need a kubernetes network up you know we'll worry about the configurations later but i just need these pods to be able to communicate with each other in a normal way there's some for that as well and then if you need some that are you know just security centric add-ons they're here as well so what i re always recommend is either flannel or weave now, I typically always use Weave because I just think it's pretty straightforward to set up. And then, of course, for your service discovery itself, you have core DNS. Now, if I click on one of these, like let's say I click on WeaveNet, you can see if I zoom in, there's, you know, a bunch of different installation methods. So, like, for example, on, let's say, KubeADM, <laughs> you pretty much just have to run this command here. So it's running a kubectl apply minus F, it's going out to the cloud.weave.works and it's just pulling in a Kubernetes manifest that you know exists up there in that URL and you deploy it and that's pretty much it. You have networking available inside of Kubernetes. So it's actually pretty sweet. And then if we look at some of the other ones, like for example, let's say we look at, I don't know, ACI, right? For Cisco ACI networking. And if we scroll down here, we can see that, you know, this is just some code that's being hosted on GitHub that you can use for networking. If we go ahead and if we look at something like Flannel, for example, same thing. So this is actually just an open source project that's hosted on GitHub and the instructions are right here to go ahead and be able to install it. So the reason why I want to, you know, ultimately show this is for two things. Number one, if you're getting into Kubernetes, you need to understand this. You need to understand that there's a lot of networking that happens underneath the hood. It's not just developer stuff. You know, I feel like a lot of people that are new to Kubernetes think like, hey, I'm just going to jump in and, you know, this is just for developers and I don't have a job here. But operations and networking are super crucial when it comes to Kubernetes. And the second piece is I always recommend everybody, whether you're a network engineer, or DevOps engineer, cloud engineer, whatever, to spin up a raw Kubernetes cluster using something like KubeADM is perfectly fine just to get the gist of what's happening underneath the hood and using something like KubeADM and you know setting up one of these network add-ons. I call them frameworks, network frameworks. So if you hear me saying that, that's why. But if you you know set up KubeADM and use one of these network add-ons or frameworks, whatever you want to call it, it's going to help you understand a little bit more about what's happening underneath the hood. That way it's not so insanely abstracted away from you.